if you were an able-bodied citizen of the United States, you were required to do your job. It's hard for you to understand that, but you had you to had do no it. You had no alternative. There wasn't no other way out of it. If I'd have said, no, I'm not going to join, they would have drafted me. That would have uh, been like put in uh, like a conservation corps or garbage man or they made me do something. There wasn't anything, I don't feel like going. You went. When they were fighting the war here, it was, everybody, was, everybody involved. was involved. There was no guy hanging out like, if you was hanging out in the street corner and you were a civilian, you were a rat. You were low life. Nobody talked to you. The only good thing about the draft was you had the whole spectrum of the population. You had the college boys, the workers, the athletes, they were all in the same boat. When you go, when you get it, it says from the President of the United States, you are hereby Notified. commanded to report to your local draft board. Whatever date it was, time. So they let me graduate from school and then they took me. Everybody went. So the first time I went there, I got drafted. I took, uh, wanted to be in Marine Corps. I wanted to be a gunner's mate. But I flunked the physical because I was too little. I was only five foot one and I only weighed 106 pounds. Then four months later I got drafted again. This time I wanted to be a pilot or a bombardier or something, you know. Mm -hmm. It was romantic. So uh, I signed up for that. Basic training and then the college training. It was to find out if you had any brains at all before they put you in flight school, you know. Mm -hmm. Which was good. I learned a lot of stuff there. You learned uh, military uh, manners, and you uh, learned to fly. You got the first 10 hours there. Then they sent me to this thing to, for, like, called psychomotor. Like, you pull the strings to see where your depth perception is, and you uh, <clears throat> run a mile, and they take your blood pressure, or, you know. They put you in a decompression chamber, and that's where they found out I had lousy ears. And then they said that uh, you're going to be uh, something else. You're going to be, what do you want to be? And I said, I'll be a radio operator and gunner. For some reason, I don't know how the heck it happened, we wound up in the dining room, and he and I are talking and laughing about different things, and all of a sudden, he reaches over and he gives me a kiss that, that I had never felt in my life before with all the guys I would kiss goodnight or whatever. <laughs> I looked at him, he said, when are we going to get married? Enough of this, you know. Not will you marry mm -hmm. me, it's when. I said, I have no idea, you know, but he knew he was going overseas and I didn't. Mm -hmm. He said uh, he wanted to marry me and make sure that I didn't marry somebody else when he was gone. Within two or three weeks, we were married. Let's go out and sit in Dad's car. At least we'll have a few minutes together and you can try on the ring to make sure it fits. So he said, oh, okay, but you're not supposed to have it on before you, but okay. So we go and sitting in the front seat, he reaches over and he puts the ring on my finger. And because my father was a beekeeper, he had been out with bees that day, there was some bees in the car and a bee came and stung me directly in the middle of my forehead and I, 
immediately started swelling up with both eyes. Went inside. His brother Mike was putting coins on it, ice on it. We tried to keep everything on it. It just kept swelling. So the following day, I had to put dark glasses on and shove them into the swelling so that I wouldn't horrify people. And uh, that day we had to have our wedding pictures taken. He knew, men knew he was not going to be there for retakes of any pictures. So they took my picture alongside of him, had me come back after the swelling went down, and then just took my hat and a picture of it and blasted it into the original. And I think they did a fabulous job. But to today, he can honestly say, you're more beautiful than the day I married you. Okay? That's true. He could not tell me or his family, nobody.